Hey everybody! Joy here. Joy up here in the upstairs. We'll call this the embroidery department, okay? <laughs> I only have one embroidery machine in this house and it's up here and it's my Solaris and my computer that connects to it, you know, to send the designs back and forth. And my computer up here has my Artista, is it called Designer Plus or something like that software? that I can make my own embroidery designs with. So that's right behind you, you can't see it. But do you remember my sewing machine quilt? Missouri Star Quilt Company. This quilt was in one of their um, monthly block magazines. I quit getting those because there was hardly ever, 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 ever a quilt that I wanted to make. But this month I had this sewing machine quilt. I still got threads on it. <laughs> Do your quilts ever get the threads all off them? So I really like this sewing machine quilt. And you remember the short time that I was, uh, I had a sewing room actually at my daughter's house. It was a very, very, very nice sewing room. And then the guest room was right next to it. And um, I went there and I made this quilt. But those days are over. <laughs> My daughter's business is booming, 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 like dynamite going off, and uh, she dyes yarn. Her company is called A Chick That Knits, and because she used to call herself A Chick That Knits, and so when she wanted to start her own dyeing business, the word knits with an S, somebody else was using, so her knits is K-N-I-T-Z. If you want to look her up and you like yarn, she makes beautiful yarn. She can't even dye it fast enough to sell it. So, <laughs> and she just moved in. She uh, had a business for three years. She closed her business, moved a bunch of stuff into storage and back to her house. And now instead of having a business where people can come in, you know, from nine to five every day, she has a little commercial uh, building where, you know, it's just her and her employees. And so you have to buy her yarn I guess online, but uh, I tried doing yarn for a while and crocheting, but I don't know if I'm just a super slow person or what, but I just sit. I would just sit hour after hour after hour, just sit, <laughs> and I thought, I have to go back to my other hobby where I go up and down the stairs 500 times a day. <laughs> Much better to get some exercise. So what have I been doing? Let me take a little break and I'll come back and show you. Sorry. <laughs> I'm having an allergy attack this morning from yesterday. We went out yesterday and the wind, the wind, the wind. I actually videoed the wind. I thought I bet none of my subscribers live in a place where the wind blows like this almost every day. Yes. So we had to go to a funeral yesterday afternoon and it was about 45 minutes from here. And uh, we stopped to get lunch on the way. We left real early. And, oh, Jerry said, get out of the car on your side first and close the door. Because if I close this door, the wind's going to blow into here and slam this door or what. Knock this door into the other car. <laughs> I mean, it was so windy. <laughs> and so I had fixed my hair, put on a nice outfit to go to this funeral, stepped out of the car, and the wind just... Blew my hair straight forward, like the parsley. Did you see the parsley? That was me. <laughs> straight forward. <laughs> ah, I went to the funeral looking like, who was that guy with the hair? Tim Conway? <laughs> yeah, it was about that bad. I told the people there, I said, I just want you to know that I did comb my hair before we left the house. <laughs> so what have I been doing? other than complaining about the wind. You remember my baby quilts? I don't know where the book is. The book isn't sitting right here. Uh, maybe I accidentally put it away. <laughs> I do put things away eventually. So this is from, oh, Joy, wake up your brain, wake up your brain. What's the place called? Kimberbell, remember Kimberbell? And Philly and I both saw these little quilts in a quilt shop and decided we wanted to make them. And so we both ordered the book. The book is in my Amazon store under books. 
and um, it has lots and lots and lots of things you can make. But Philly and I just wanted to make these cute little quilts to hang on our wall. And so you saw the spools. I finished the spools. The spools are downstairs hanging in the long arm department. <laughs> and this is the second one. This is the one with the scissors. And it says, I play with scissors for the sheer, S-H-E-A-R, for the sheer fun of it. And then it has these three scissors. Now how cute is that? You want me to hold it closer? Could you please get closer than a mile away? All right. <laughs> there it is, closer than a mile away. Super cute. So I've come up here today to find some fabric to make the binding with. This is a cute one. That is so cute. This is brown and it's got the green in it. That might be a cute binding. Huh? Or I have the one that's in the middle here. That might be a cute binding. It'll probably take me half the day to decide. I'll probably change my mind 18 times. So that's one of the things I did. Now let me give you a little tip in case you make this. You saw the three little silver things here. They were actually little bitty brads, I think they're called like you would stick through a hole in some papers and then you open up the little flaps on the back, the little two metal legs, arms, whatever you want to call them. You open them up and flatten them. Well, I did not want to poke a hole in my quilt. And that's what you're supposed to do is poke a hole in the quilt to put these through. So I went over to Jerry's barn and asked Jerry if he had a way to cut those little legs off the back and so I could just have the top. So I just have the three tops and I glued them to the quilt with E6000. E6000 will glue anything to anything. I love that glue. <laughs> okay, so that's my little tip if you're making that. If you want to poke a hole in your quilt and stick them through that, go right ahead. Oh, and yet it's, there she is drinking coffee again. No, she isn't. I wish I could show you in my cup. Can I show you in my cup? <laughs> Let me show you in my cup. Can you see it? This is water out of the Keurig. Just water. And I put a little bit of cinnamon and sugar from the shaker. I mean a little bit. Maybe three shakes. Hardly any. And the cinnamon all goes to the bottom anyway. And then I started yesterday putting about a quarter teaspoon of honey in it. And so I'm not really crazy about honey. I like honey and tea but not coffee and I didn't know if I'd like it in water <laughs> but I put just a dab of honey in here and stirred it all up so it gives it it makes it taste like a cup of tea really because it has a flavor you know yeah it actually tastes better than coffee so I have not had any GERD you know what GERD is when your stomach comes up into your throat I have not had any when did I go to the doctor on the 3rd and this is the 12th and he told me quit the coffee, quit the tea, quit this, quit that, quit everything and I have not had any GERD whatsoever and no pills for it. No pills. <laughs> so I'm real excited about that and I've got an appointment with him next Tuesday and then he said I can start adding things back in. So there's, you're not supposed to have butter. I'm never going to quit having butter. I thought butter doesn't cause GERD. That's ridiculous. So no dairy, but I am still eating butter, real butter. My mother would be so upset in heaven if I was to eat margarine or some one of those other spreads. <laughs> but I have to eat butter. And um, plus it's so much better than all those other things. And yesterday I had four or five french fries and a hamburger with no cheese and I didn't have any GERD and um, I ate three chocolate covered almonds one day and I didn't have any GERD <laughs> so maybe next week I'll try the coffee again but I'm enjoying the hot water with nothing in it actually which isn't that silly who would have ever thought oh. of course there is the issue of having 200 pods 
Keurig cups, pod cups, or K cups, K cups, I guess they're called. But uh, maybe I'll have to do a giveaway for them. <laughs> All right, what else do I want to tell you? I have a new thing. I have a new thing. Now, it's not a cheap thing. I remember a few years ago looking for a new sleeve board because my sleeve board is just so stained and so old, and I don't have any more covers for it, and I was going to buy another one. Well, there weren't any. There were none. I could not even find one, not on Amazon, not anywhere. So I don't have one here because my old, old, old sleeve board still at the other house. So I got on Amazon to search sleeve boards again. Well, they actually have a whole bunch of them now. But they had this one odd one. And you can look at it in my Amazon store under Sewing Essentials. It's a sleeve board, and you will see it. I've got it on my screen right now. It does not look like what you're going to receive. Let me turn the camera around and show it to you. It has a really strange name. It's called Padded Chest and Sleeve Ironing Board. Lightweight, rugged, portable, on-the-go ironing boards. Sleeve ironing board. Okay? I thought, what the heck is a padded chest ironing board? And look at the picture. Does that look any different than any other sleeve board? That's what I thought I was going to get, was a sleeve board that looks like that. That's the picture, right? Look, I almost feel like calling them and telling them, that is not what you sent me. But um, what they did send me actually turned out to be a really cool thing. So this is it. Look at how many stars it has. Four and a half stars. People really like it. It's expensive, forty-eight seventy-five. but you only have to buy it once for the rest of your life. You know, I've had mine since Tammy was a baby. So... Um, but it's at the other house. Are we selling the other house? Yes, someday. <laughs> okay, so I want to show you what this really looks like because it doesn't look anything like this. Now this part in here does, this metal part, it, that looks the same and that looks the same, but the rest of the thing doesn't look anything like that. So let me show you what it actually is and what it looks like. So here it is. I have it on the floor. It's not heavy. It looks like it would be heavy, but it's not. Look at this side. Does that look anything like the picture on Amazon? It's like a little baby ironing board. And it is really nice. It's really nice for getting into this part. Chest. It's called chest, right? For getting into this part of your blouses. In the back and in the front and for getting into this part. And of course the other parts to get into your sleeve. That's normal on the back. So that's a new thing that I have. You can see it's new. It's actually still clean. <laughs> so I don't know if anybody's interested in that or not. You know, that would be really a nice little ironing board for the RV. I have a little ironing board in there, but you have to like unfold the legs and set it up on the bed. That one um, would take up much less room and you could still iron something on it. So I don't know. You all decide if you like it or you don't. Okay, what else am I doing? Somebody asked me how you do a round back. How do you know if you need a round back? <laughs> there is a way to figure it out. I wish I could show you. Maybe I can show you with this. I wonder if this will stand up. Will you stand up for me? If I had some material or something to hold it up. Let's check this out. Look at this. See, this is why you have to have a lot of fat quarters and scraps of fabric in case you ever have to hold one of these up. For a demo. Oh, so play like this is somebody's back. How can I make it be a round back? Hold on. Hold on. We're going to figure this out. Let's put some of these scraps in there, huh? I am figuring this out as we go. <laughs> no idea what I'm doing. Let's take it down and make it be a round back. How about that? Okay, so we're going to make a round back here. Now, you can look in a mirror. If you have a three-way mirror, use it. If you don't, get a handheld mirror and look in a normal mirror. I think I need a bigger round back than that. Let's get a bigger round back with all of these scraps. 
Uh, there's a big scrap. Let's try it. All right, let's try that for a round back. Yeah, that looks pretty round to me. Look at here. I think I just came up with a whole new invention for like teachers to teach how to show it round back. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh my goodness. It is really cute though, isn't it? All right, so let's stand it back up. Let's play like this person has a pretty bad round back. <laughs> and let's turn it sideways. So can you see the round back? So play like the person's head is up here and their arms are out this way. Their arms are out this way. And their head's up here and this is their back, okay? Right here is their back. <laughs> so this is what you do. You get a cloth or paper I don't know what they're actually, plastic, measuring tape, you know, I'll get one here in a second. And then you get a hard measuring tape and ruler, a hard ruler. So here's what you have to have. Masking tape, a soft measuring tape, and a hard ruler. The ruler needs to be longer than the area of the back that you're measuring. You don't measure from the neck to the waist, okay? Here's the neck, here's the waist. No, no. You don't measure from the neck to the waist. You measure where you see that you're around. And this is going to take another person. It's going to take another person to help you. I had Jerry do mine. I had Philly do mine once and I had Jerry do mine once. When I first started out years ago, I was 5 eighths inch off. And when Jerry measured me last time, I was 1 inch. And Jerry is like one and a half inch or more <laughs> but I made some clothes for him for a while so the first thing you do is you figure out on your back this is kind of sticking out too far even for this kind of a back take the colored tape make it a bright color that you can see have the person that's helping you mark from where to where on your back the roundness is the roundness could be way up here by your neck. The roundness could be here, you know, in your lower back. Mine is. Mine's lower. I have scoliosis in there, and mine's lower. And um, it's not way up by my neck. It might be now, but it didn't used to be. So have whoever's helping you mark where the round part is. So you're going to measure from the bottom of this piece of tape to the top of this piece of tape. Okay? Hopefully you can see that. Let me turn it a little so you can see it some more. We can't tell, Joy. Okay. Start. You can start with either one, but I'm going to start with the hard ruler. And I'm going to line it up to where it's touching the bottom. And it won't touch because you're going to have a hump. <laughs> but, you know, eyeball it from the bottom of that tape to the top of that tape is nine and three quarter inches. Okay, I'm going to put it down here so I can see it better. So you're going to measure from the bottom of the masking tape on the top and to the top of the masking tape on the bottom and it's nine and a half inches. Okay? Nine and a half inches. So write that down somewhere. Have your helper person write down nine and a half inches. Now, you're going to take, this isn't wanting to stand up that good, y'all. Now you're going to take your soft tape, and you're going to measure from the bottom of the top masking tape to the top of the bottom masking tape, and we have ten and a half. Ten and a half. Ten and one half inches. Okay? So when we measured it straight up and down, which it isn't, we're, you know, we're out here in air measuring. We're not going over the curve. We're going straight up and down because we want to know how big the curve is. So when we measured it straight, it was nine and a half. When we measured it with this, it was ten and a half. So you take ten and a half and you subtract nine and a half and you've got one inch. So when you do your round back, on the back 
pattern piece of the garment you're making, you will cut it and spread it one inch at the center back. You just cut it over to the armhole, jump the seam, cut it out the seam allowance, spread it one inch, put a piece of paper under it, and tape it all down. That will allow the back of your shirt to have enough room to go over this hump. And you won't constantly be fighting pulling your garment forward, forward, forward because the back is fighting you pulling it backwards because it wants more fabric. You see? So, it's just like the boobs in the front. You have to allow room to go over that. You can't just make it straight when you're not straight. <laughs> Alright, do the patterns allow for it? No. <laughs> I have not seen that they do. But that's basically how you do a round back. I hope when I edit this that you guys are able to see that. So let's take the round back off and pardon the allergies. I am so sorry. It's Saturday, April 13, I think, 2024. And I thought, well, if I'm going to show you how to figure out how wide to make your round back, I ought to really quick show you how to make a round back. I was going to use my, my back thing, you know, but it's not up here anymore. So what you would do is, number one, you figured out where on your back your round part is. Mine's about right there, I think. So you would want to come to that point on your pattern. Now, I'm so sorry, I think somebody's mowing our lawn. Um, you would want to figure out where that point is on your pattern. If your round part's way up here by your neck, you would want to make the correction way up here. If it's further down like mine is, you would want to make it down where it's at. You know, you can tell by your armhole. Where is it on your armhole where you're the roundest? Now, if you are, I would say, one inch or bigger, it's best to cut more than one line. I learned that from Cynthia Guffey. She was so, so good at anything. She's passed away, but um, oh my goodness, she could sure teach you how to sew. I bet a lot of you know Cynthia Guffey or knew her. So if you need two inches, say, I would make four slices and spread each one one half inch, okay? So let's play like we just need half an inch, all right, on this little bitty back pattern. And we're going to play like we're doing it on me, so we're going to come down here about halfway down my arm hole, because that's where I'm the roundest. And we are going to cut. Now you always need to know, let me see if I can find a color you can see here. I don't think you can see blue. Let me find a better color, my friends. What's that girl's name that does these marks so, so good? Is it Jennifer? Oh my goodness, what is her last name? It'll come to me. Her name's Jennifer. And oh my gosh, you should watch her channel. She does what I do, but she does it way, 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 way more. And probably way, 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 way better. She goes way beyond. She does all of the different fixes that you need. I only show you the fixes I need. Because that's the only thing I'm really good at, is sewing for myself. So what we're going to do always, always first, is find the seam allowance. So you're going to mark your seam allowance. And this is just a baby pattern, and I actually have no idea where the seam allowance is. And then this over here, this is center back. Okay? Now what if that wasn't center back? <laughs> You would just have another seam allowance. Only on the center back, you would cut all the way across the seam allowance because you have to open this dude up. Okay? <laughs> so, you don't cut all the way across here because we're not spreading the armhole. But you do cut all the way across this way, even if it has a seam allowance, because we are making this, the back of the garment longer to go over our hump. See, it's really simple. Okay, so let me take a different color and show you where you draw the line. Hopefully you can see this blue. 
this is a friction marker so this is how I do me only I'm an inch so sometimes I just do one cut but sometimes I do two cuts it depends on you know the garment so we're gonna draw a line do you see the blue line I drew the blue line all the way across to the armhole and through the armhole I'm not going to cut where the red dashes are that's the seam allowance and we've got to leave the seam allowance there we're not going to cut it but we're going to cut past it because that helps us spread it better all right so you want to see me cut it let me see if I can hold it up so you can see it <laughs> I never know for sure what y'all see sometimes I see I get my face right up in the camera and I'm like delete 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 <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start from the center back. Oh, and I've drawn on the wrong side of it. Well, that was extra brilliant, don't you think? I think that was extra brilliant to, to draw on the wrong side. So let's draw on the right side. You always do your fixes on the right side. Put your tape on the right side, and then you press on the back side. Palmer plush, palmer plush, because you never want to iron the tape. And... The, the best way to prevent that is throw a press cloth on top of it and iron on top of it. Then that won't melt your tape. All right, now I've got the line on the right side that might help. So here's my back pattern, okay? We're going to cut over two, but not through that seam allowance, see? So you see how it can't open? See how it... it bends funny there because it can't open so you have to come over here and you have to clip to but not through and not all the way to where you cut on the other side then you can lift it because there's a hinge there now and you can spread that thing see so in this case I would spread it one half inch right here right here I would spread that one half inch you don't need a half inch over here There's nothing wrong with the armhole your armhole isn't sliding up over the front of you <laughs> the center back is it's going up over your shoulders and up over your neck so you're gonna cut here you're gonna put a piece of paper let's find a piece of paper put a piece of paper behind it and tape Put a piece of paper behind it, play like that's a piece of paper, which obviously it isn't, and tape it all down, tape it real good, okay? And then you will you won't need any out here past the armhole, you won't need paper out there, you just cut all that off. And cut it uh, here, here on the edge, you'll end up with maybe a little tiny hump right here. So now what do you do about putting it on the fold? You still put it on the fold. You just put this point up here on the fold and you put this point down here on the fold and you don't worry about anything in between. You may cut off an eighth of an inch or something through this area. It doesn't matter. <laughs> there is plenty of ease in the back of a garment that you don't have to worry about that. If there isn't, you need to add some ease for another reason, for another fix. All right, so that's a round back correction after you figure out. Now what if you did need more than one cut? Well, make more than one cut. Yes, say we needed a whole inch or we needed two inches. Do I know the limit to how far you can do this? I don't. I don't know. I would say you could do two inches pretty easily. If you need more than that, um, I think you better ask Jennifer and I can't think of her last name yet. <laughs> Oh, although, you know, a lot of people with scoliosis, you know, they may need three inches. Try it. Try it. If you need three inches, try it. See how it works out. See, so now I have two cuts. In my case, instead of doing a half inch here, I would do a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here. If you needed two inches, you'd do an inch here and an inch here. See, it just spreads it out a little more evenly. And again you would put the top on the fold and the bottom on the fold and you would lose a little bit in this hump. Now, 
Nothing in the world wrong with adding a seam allowance to this. It would it fits you even better, actually, if you did add the seam allowance to it and sew it up because then it would really lay nice over your curve. And if you get a lot, if you if you if you need two or three inches, I'd put the seam allowance in it. Now with myself, I put a sway back in it, and a sway back's done the exact opposite way. You cross it over, so my back pattern always goes out and then in, <laughs> like a little S. So that's how you do a round back. Just wanted to go ahead and complete showing you that. Okay, I'm going to cut out some binding. I have several big jobs to do. We have our new furniture. Our new furniture is all here. We don't have any lamps or floral arrangements or pictures yet. We do at the other house, but they're at the other house. So, um, I'm making some pillows. Uh, the pillows are already made. They're just little pillows. Like the kids use. Like that you use in the car. Little ones. I thought I was going to have to get great big ones, but actually these little ones are much more comfortable using them on our couch and our recliners. So I'm going to make, oh, probably a half a dozen, maybe eight of them, and just keep them down there. Maybe I'll buy a basket to put them in, put some, leave some of them on the couch. I don't know, but I've got to make covers for those because um, I was able to find some fabric uh, that's going to look good. And so I've got that downstairs, several yards of it, and pillows are easy, you know. They're real easy to make. Um, you want me to show you how you make the pillow? <laughs> well, if you can remember it properly, Julie. <laughs> I had three failures so far. Or is it four failures? I had two Celeste tops. Oops, pardon me. Let's turn it over the other way. I've had two Celeste tops. One was the little blue flowers, which I really, really like. But I don't like to wear it because the neck is gaping. And it, with that silly way they had you finish the inside with an entire new front and sew it all down, hand stitch it inside, or did I stitch in the ditch? I'm not going to spend three hours taking that thing off of there. So that's in the Goodwill bag. And then there's the one with the tulips. The one with the tulips I actually wore the other day. I think I even wore it on Shine. So I actually wore it. So it's wearable. Um, oh, I have something so cool to tell you guys. Oh, don't let me forget. Don't let me forget. Somebody remind me. <laughs> um, what was I saying? <laughs> don't make fun of me. Y'all do it too. <laughs> Pillows. Dress. Oh, my failures. And so I had the two Celeste tops, which I considered both of them failures, but I took apart the tulips and I made the sleeves smaller and I made the neck smaller and um, I like it now. I mean, it's wearable enough. And then I made the Montana dress and Philly had made the Montana dress and both of us decided that that dress was as big as Montana. <laughs> so I, I actually made the front gathered part smaller and I don't remember what all I did, but I fixed it too. And so it's wearable, and I actually wore it one day. So it's in my closet, and I will wear it. So only, oh, and then I made five things, four things. The fourth thing was I ordered some fabric from Peggy Sagers, because on her last, like two videos ago, she had this really cute top that she made, and it had a border print that she made go long ways. And so it had big, the big stripes right here. And then over here was the plain part. And then she had gathered up the side of it. It was really, really cute. Lots of people liked it. And um, it said that it was a panel, and the panel was a yard and a quarter. I thought, oh, that'll be plenty. Well, it wasn't plenty. And so I tried to order another yard of it. It, it was gone. Evidently, everybody liked that top. So uh, I cut mine out with the stripes going across here. And it ended up with a white stripe going directly across my back. <laughs> Bus darts and all. <laughs> it was really, really, really thin fabric, and so it's in the Goodwill box, too. So I hope somebody likes that. <laughs> so I'm going to make pillows for the couches downstairs. Then we got our finally new dining room table. You want me to show you it? We got our new dining room table and our new chairs and the bar stools, and we just love it. But, um, we won't use it. We won't allow ourselves to touch it. <laughs> we had to have it special built. And the people that sold it to us said that it takes 30 days for the stains to cure. And so, you're not supposed to use it for 30 days. 
So, and we're not going to ever use it until I make some tablecloths for it. So that's another big project I have going, is to make 12 quilted table mats, not tablecloths, not a tablecloth, um, placemats. I'm going to make 12 placemats because we have 8 chairs that go around the table, but only 6 on a regular basis. The other two are on the side, you'll see. And then the bar stools, 3 bar stools. So I'm going to make 12. And I'm going to do it on my long arm. But I didn't order enough fabric. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought two yards of fabric would be plenty. Two yards for the top, two yards for the back. No, no, no. That's not near enough. <laughs> so I had to order three more yards. I'll go down with this camera and show you a picture. Oh, I guess I could just take a photo of it. Oh, for heaven's sakes, I'll just take a photo of it. But I want to show you something. I'll take the camera down and do a little video of the table and how I figured out to do the placemats. So the table's in the middle. The table can be round, a perfect circle, with six chairs around it. But we bought one that has a leaf that goes in the middle of it, so it's an oval. So we can actually get eight chairs around that table. So chair seven and chair eight are right there right now, because when you have company, you know, they always want to sit and talk to you while you're cooking. We bought that um, buffet for another place in the house. <laughs> but when it got here, I told Jerry, oh my gosh, that has to be in the kitchen with the kitchen table. <laughs> it totally goes with it. So we got the mirror. Now the decorations are just, you know, until I figure out what to do later. But um, the table, I actually bought those. I bought the, uh, the little vase thing uh, at Hobby Lobby and the two little candles and the two little candle holders. And so I want to show you how I figured out how to decide how to make the placemats. Should they be rectangles? Should they be circles? Should they be short at the top and long at the bottom? How do you make placemats to fit an oval table? So I just took some paper, like I use when I'm cutting out patterns, and I cut a big square and put it here. I cut the square 15 by 20, I think. And I put it down on the table, and I couldn't tell anything. And so then I went and I cut another piece, so I had at least two of them, because I want to see how they're going to butt up to each other here. Then I actually set the table. At my house growing up, we set the table like this every single night. Every single night forever, as long as I was growing up. My mother took home ec 100 years ago. I took home ec 75 years ago. <laughs> and back in the day, and of course you would have prettier dishes, you know, I just pulled stuff out of the cabinet. <clears throat> but, um, I mean, you wouldn't have a pink cup in a, well, we wouldn't have a pink cup in a blue cup. <laughs> but you might. <laughs> I'll probably get some comments on that. Now remember, this is the way I grew up. And um, we learned how to properly set a table. Now this one actually is not proper. The fork is in the right place, the knife, the spoon, the plate, the salad bowl, and the cup are in the right place. But something's not in the right position. I'll show you what it is. The silverware is supposed to be one thumb from the edge. This is a round table, so it'll have to be from the edge of the placemat. That's where the silverware is supposed to be one thumb and then the plates just in the middle and the knife the sharp part of the knife faces the plate faces the plate this is what I was taught this by my mother as a child because from nine years old it was my job to have dinner on the table and the table set me and my sisters when my parents got home from work yeah home alone nine years old <laughs> so the glass goes here. The teacup. This is the teacup. I think my mother always had tea, and I don't, so I'm not sure, but I think if you have tea and a saucer, it goes here. And then the salad bowl or the bread dish um, goes over here. I just wanted you to see that to figure out what size to make the placemats, I set the placemat like I set the table because I wanted to make sure that all of the dishes 
were on the placemat and nothing was on the wood part of the table. So Jerry helped me. I had these as a square and when they were a square the points crossed each other here and they hung off the table down here. So Jerry said why don't you cut those into more of an oval shape. So I went back in the sewing room and I cut an oval shape. And then I brought it back out here and I put the dishes back on it. Well, when it was a real oval shape, this was up here and this was up here and it didn't fit right. It was too little. So I went back to the drawing board again. I went back to the drawing board again <laughs> and came up with this shape. So this is the actual shape Jerry approved that my placemats are going to be. Now six of them will fit just fine and I think even eight. They may cross over a little bit of tad, I'm not sure, but I think even eight might fit on here. But this has a, a leaf in it and if you take the leaf out it is a circle. So real excited about that. And my placemats are going to be the color of this on the top and this on the bottom. And you can see that those two colors are in the candles. I just love those. Oh, I think they're so pretty. And I like that they're casual. They're not fancy brass or anything. In fact, we couldn't find a brass candlestick anywhere. Evidently, they're out of style. <laughs> Nobody does brass anymore. Okay, so that's that. And uh, I've got to get busy. I'll be back later. So I just edited this video. Everything up to here, I just edited it. And I decided it's a good place to stop on whatever snippets are there. But I have something else I want to show you. And I need to put it in another video. Because if people search for how to do a round back correction, then they'll be able to, you know, look at that title and be able to find it without me chatting on day after day after day. <laughs> Those kinds of my videos actually get the most views. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that and probably tomorrow Sunday we have to do shine. So maybe Monday I'll start another one because I have the coolest thing to tell you. You are going to love it. I'll see you then.